What's up, y'all? You are listening to For the Artists, a podcast brought to you by Creative and Projects. I'm your host, Melissa Cherie. Today, I am super excited because the person that I'm going to be speaking to, she was named uh, the SEA Female DJ of the Year at one point in time. Versatility, originality, and flexibility beyond the turntables are keywords, just a few keywords that are used to describe her talents. And by her, I am speaking of the one and only Gigi Sweet. Gigi Sweet began her career as a senior uh, at the University of Arizona. And after working on perfecting her craft for about a year, she landed her first gig with the local Kappa Alpha Psi chapter. She soon became one of the most sought after DJs in Tucson, holding down almost every Greek function at the university. And this is where she began to make mixed CDs. I'm not going to say too much about that because, you know, maybe she'll give us the, the inside scoop. But she's doing a lot of things. You probably have heard her on the beat. Um, I do remember when the, the beat is still popping. So let me not say it was, it was not popping anymore. But I remember it from when I was like in high school. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, she's been rocking it for a minute. It was the number one station in the LA market. I do remember that. During that time, she was offered a warm up position um, for the syndicated TV show Steve Harvey's Big Time on the WB. She has a lot of accomplishments, y'all. She's been on 102.3 KJLH. Uh, she, she is she's a phenomenal woman. Yes, she is. I have met her personally. I have worked with her personally. And she's probably like, all right, now, enough of that. Let's get to talking. So welcome, y'all. Gigi Sweet. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I should really appreciate you, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. It's always like... You know, we haven't known each other that long, but I feel like whenever I talk to you, it's like talking to an old friend. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you feel comfortable enough to say that. For <laughs> real. What do they say? It's not how, uh, it's what they made, how you made people feel that people remember. So hopefully, you know, I'll make people feel like I'm the home girl from around the way. <laughs> yes, you definitely do that. That's true. <laughs> All right, so man, talk to me, talk to me about how you got started. Of course, I want to know, uh, was being a DJ something that you always aspired to wanting to do? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, let's start there. You know how you have your one family member that's that um, they know all the songs, they know all the music? Mm -hmm. That was my sister. My sister knew all the songs. She knew all the music. And every time the new tape came out, she had the single, whatever. And I wasn't that girl. I, I started out uh, my career, um, you know, I was an All-American out of high school. So I was an All-American in all everything, playing basketball here in the state of California, uh, highly recruited. Um, and so when, when I got ready to leave for college, I picked the University of Arizona, which was in the Pac-10 at the time. Um, and so I ended up going to Arizona on basketball scholarship, which was great because I, I left the U of A you know, with no student loans or anything like that. So full ride. Um, so I'm very grateful um, for that experience. And when I was there, you know, I was doing my thing, but I discovered that I liked, you know, I, I was interested in music, but I, I really found myself um, when we would go to the club, you know how you sneak in the club with that fake ID that, that nobody believes is you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, um, shortly before I left for college, I had, you know, hung out with my friend who was a DJ and he was on the basketball team too. But I, what I didn't know was that he was, um, he was the son of, of a well-known UCLA basketball player and coach, Walt Hazard. And so he was at our high school and, um, his name was Doc and he's a well-known DJ now, well-known producer, um, in the, in the ranks with like Dr. Dre. And so when I went to his party one time, right before we left for, um, right before I left for college, and I was like, yo, that looks like something I'm interested in. But at the time I was getting ready to leave for college and who's a female DJ? I didn't really, I didn't really know what it was. I just saw him doing it. And I was like, yo, I think I was like, this is interesting. It's not a lot of ladies. You might see a couple on TV at the time. You might've seen one or two on TV here and there, but I was getting ready to leave for college and what did I know about it, right? Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> you know, got to college one. And then I just, every time we would go to like the little clubs, I would find myself, you know, next to the DJ booth. 
and everybody else is out there, you know, partying. And I would always be looking at the DJ booth and see what they were doing. And so it kind of just grew from there. Okay, so you basically was like, I'm cool on basketball, I'm going to DJ. Well, I mean, I, obviously basketball took me to one space, you know what I mean? Uh, took mm -hmm. me all around the world, you know, uh, played basketball and, you know, went overseas, played, you know, we did a bunch of different things with that. But then once I graduated, it was it was something else. And, that, and my senior year, right before my senior year, I started buying, all that time I was buying equipment buying equipment and buying records and stuff when you bought records <laughs> and, <laughs> and then my senior year I got everything together and I did a party I got booked to do a party and I was like yo I was like oh okay I was like you know this could be something and mm. I just I just had the love for it and I don't know it just it just grabbed me but obviously i didn't think oh that's gonna be a career i just started doing parties and and i started and no and i had a different dj name i had my dj name was dj g wiz <laughs> <laughs> and, and i and so i had my little business cards and i had a my beeper number <laughs> that's how long i've been djing I had a beeper number right? <laughs> i had a beeper i had a beeper <laughs> And so I, you know, the name of my uh, my DJ uh, thing because I was like trying to be clever with everything. The name of my DJ company was Hook It Up Productions. You know, like I got the hook up. You know, mm -hmm, <laughs> right? mm -hmm. um, but nobody would call me uh, DJ G Wiz. Everybody, and I was like, well, I'm nobody would call me that. <laughs> they would be like, oh, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, Gigi Sweet, yo, Gigi Sweet, the girl, you know, from the basketball team, she's DJing. Oh yeah. So everybody would always call me that. So eventually I just went back to GG Sweet, which was people were like, is that your name? I was like, that's been my nickname forever. I've been GG Sweet forever. And so mm. it was just like, okay, well, I guess I better accept that this is going to be it, you know? And so DJ got going, graduated. Um, but I, you know, once I graduated, I still had to figure out what I was, what work I was doing. And so I, I got booked to, um, at the time I was doing a bunch of internships and all that kind of thing with sports broadcasting because I got my degree in media arts and journalism. Um, and I actually wrote for my school paper, which is the Arizona Wildcat. <laughs> so when I tell people that, they're like, Whoop. I was like, I could break out my clips if you want, <laughs> you want to verify that I was a, a staff writer on the Arizona Wildcat, right? And so that was my early, the early years of Gigi Sweet prior to you know really going full blast as a as a full-time dj all these towns okay there's a couple of questions that came up for me while i was listening to you okay um one is you know i feel like when it comes to like having a love for something i feel like a lot of times artists will get hung up on that it's like almost like that it's not enough like you know what i mean like if you love something that's not a that's not enough of a reason to pursue it Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, but but I but I mean, sometimes I I come across artists, and that's kind of where they are because they're like, yeah, well, you know, love doesn't pay the bills or whatever. So I'm like, how did you, how did you get past that? Maybe you weren't really like consciously thinking about it, mm -hmm. but in hindsight, it's like, how did you know to just keep with something that you love? Uh, early on when I started DJ, you know, I, we came up in the mixtape days where, you know, when you were selling your mixtapes, you got people really feeling your mixtapes. You, you would sell them and people would buy, you know, and you can make nice money doing it. You know what I mean? So um, I started doing my parties and, and um, started getting a name for myself in a mixtape game. I was actually in the Source magazine twice for mixtapes when, when that was a thing, the tail of the tape. You know what I mean? Hey. Listening mm -hmm. to, you know, like the East Coast DJs. I was going off of the East Coast DJs. Even though I was from LA, I would listen to their mixtapes. So I, ma I made a name for myself. I started going to like car shows and different places. Right now, everybody's on. Oh, I got merch. Oh, I got it. Okay. Well, I, that, that, the beginning of that was just going, setting up your turntables at the thing. Getting your, I would get a booth. If they didn't book me to DJ, I would, I would get a booth there. I would... Just, hey, how much is a vendor booth? I would get my vendor booth. I would get sponsors, artists or, or labels that were trying to give out free stuff at the thing. And I would get them to pay for the booth. 
-hmm. and then I would sell my mixtapes and things like that there. So it was a couple things that I kind of set in motion that had money coming in to make it where, you know, I could see I could make a living at this. And I haven't even, if I'm not DJing a party, what else can I do if I'm not DJing an event, right, Mm -hmm. at the same time? Because this let's be realistic. Every club is not going to always, at the time, it wasn't like, this was like 98, 99. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. might get a club, you might not, you might get an event, you might not. So in the event of that, what do you say to yourself if I don't? Oh, I can do this. I can make, I can do this or that if I'm going to pursue it full time. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I got going. And then the nail in the coffin was my grandmother, she came to live with me. And she didn't believe that I was DJing, right? She was like, well, what you doing with this? This You have a degree. Which, why are you doing this? You know? Yeah, that's great and all, but uh, you know, you have a degree. What, what is this? So, when one time we had an, uh, I came home and she had a store on Fifty Fourth and Crenshaw. That's how people didn't know I was from LA. But when I would tell them, hey, you know, I'm from LA. You just don't know because I grew up. I went away and grew up. And my grandmother's store was on Fifty Fourth and Crenshaw. And one day she was out there selling dinners, right? So I mm-hmm. said, oh, you selling dinners? Okay. I'm going to set up my turntables outside and play music while you sell these dinners. And when I did that, she was like, oh, you know, you're actually pretty good at that, you know? And I was like, I told you, I'm not, I'm not sitting here, <laughs> not like blowing smoke, you know, blowing smoke at you, but you know, this is really something I've been putting time into, you know? And so once she became like a little believer, it was like, oh, that's all I needed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, dang, okay, I had another question. <laughs> oh, I still want to finish my other question because the first one was a two-parter. Because this is the thing, when you were talking before, you were saying how people recognized you from playing ball. Yeah. And it was like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, Gigi from playing ball, like that's who's DJing. Mm-hmm. And so that stood out to me because I feel like, you know, sometimes as we're like doing what we do in life, like we might think that like things don't really matter or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, but everything somehow connects, you yeah. know, ever, you ever notice that it's like the things that we do is like, they all connect. It's like, had you not been playing ball, yeah. like maybe that wouldn't have set you up for the success that you were going to have when you switched to music. I think, well, yeah, I think, you know, when you're playing, when you're a, a high school athlete and a, mm-hmm. and a college athlete, um one you are on the go all the time you got to have a belief in your okay let's say you're playing basketball in high school and people going oh well you you uh, you know good you need to get a scholarship yep you got to have that 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 thing in you that's going every time you're going out you're practicing you're going to tournaments and all of that you got to have that that thing in you that's saying hey yeah i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it and i think even now when i think back at it i, I had that i'm gonna make it because i came from a, a background that wasn't that great but I did have that thing in me saying, I'm gonna make it. Next thing you know, I'm an All-American. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm highly recruited. I, I'm gonna go to whatever school I wanna go to for the most part, you know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. I go to Arizona, now now you're starting over. You're starting over and you're going, okay, now I'm here, I made it, I made it here. And I just had like a drive. And I think when you're doing something that everybody said you can't do, you don't have if you don't have to drive it's not gonna it's not gonna happen you got to have some sort of driving you saying yeah i can i can make it you know what i mean i think Mm -hmm. we just get so busy trying to figure out you know what it is people don't go off of the love because basketball i was i was very talented at that you know what i mean at once i I was always you know practicing i didn't mind practicing i was going for a goal I was trying my best to get out the hood. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I'm gonna get out of here. Okay. All right. I, I need a scholarship somehow. What am I, what am I going to do? But then I was good. People knew me. once I left and I started doing the DJ thing, I was like, Oh man, I could do this. It's not that many female DJs. You know, once I had that drive, it's, it's a thing. It's a love. That was the love. Basketball, mm-hmm. I was always good at that. I, I love basketball. I, that was my thing. But the DJ thing wasn't a natural thing that came to me. I wasn't naturally good at it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like the, the love of trying to figure the thing out. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, how, how I figure this out? I was all right with music and everything, but 
it wasn't like a natural thing that came to me. I really had to kind of figure it out. And and once I figured it out, I was like, oh man, okay, well, what do I, you know? It was just yeah. like the 30 years later, there, there's the love right there. You know, <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? Because when I went off to go to college, it was like, <clears throat> people were like, well, why didn't you study, you know, something that was like arts related or creative? Yeah. And it's like, but why would I do that? Like, you know, I've been doing that since I was four. Why would I spend all that money to try to learn something that I already naturally can do or know how to do? Uh -huh. So I can relate to what you were saying in terms of like the, the the wanting to do something or almost like the thrill of learning to do something that does not come naturally. Yeah. And, and you then know? once you figure out that it didn't come natural, but you were like, I really like, I really can do this and I can make money at it. How do I, how do I make it into a career? I mean, there's, there's a lot of bumps along the way where I thought to myself, okay, you know, I, that I, things that I may have done different, obviously, but the actual, just looking back, I, I wouldn't really change a thing about what I chose. I just would have, I would change how, how I went about certain things. But I think you gotta have that kind of hunger and to figure it out, especially when you're doing something that nobody thinks you should, you should be doing. You should be doing everything traditionally. And mm -hmm. I found out that I wasn't really that traditional, <laughs> you know? So, um, so, so Gigi, what would you have done differently? Uh, I would just say along the way, it, it's difficult to say what exactly I would do because at the same time I was taking care of my grandmother. So mm -hmm. it's only 24 hours in a day. You know what I mean? So you can only, you can only work on your craft so long in, in you know, without the, the different times of day, you're working on your craft. There's different times when you're going to work. There's different times when you're seeing about, you know, your loved one. So in my in the back of my mind, I think that there's things I would have changed or did or tried to dedicate more time to. But mm -hmm. I also realized that for 10 of those years, I was taking care of my grandmother. So, you know, while I want to be like, hey, I could have been doing, yeah, but how was I going to do all of that and, you know, see about my loved ones? So, you know, you just try to look back when you reflect on different things and try to say, okay, I could have did this or that, but maybe I couldn't have. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely realized that the love is what kept me going and, and being able to do a job that I love. You know what I mean? It's nothing like yeah. you work and you hate the job. Like you hear that all the time, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Life is too short to be spending it in misery, doing something that you absolutely <laughs> hate and detest. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the 10 years that you were taking care of your grandmother, um, did you did you put DJing on hold during that time during that time? No, I I was DJing. People just didn't know I was on the beat that whole time. That okay. Time. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. From the time I was in Vegas, uh, Arizona to Vegas to um, she came she came to live with me when I was in Arizona. <laughs> okay. And so from Arizona, we stayed in we were in Vegas for two years, and then we came back to LA, and we were here uh until yeah until she passed so you know so it's it it was great because a lot of times i would take her to events and stuff with me and she was like yeah we, you know we got the tupac mixtape <laughs> 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 and and people would be like oh okay let's see what you know because we would go to car shows and she, she was with me when i at the the time when I would go to different car shows and stuff like that other people might have said oh no nah, you're not going i was like no nah, come on you're rolling you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so by your smile, it seems like that was not a difficult time. It was a shift, but not difficult. No, I mean, it was everything was cool. Like I said, she was cool with me doing the career that I like. I had a job, I had, but I was going towards, you know, being a female DJ, whatever that meant. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would just laugh because people would be like, oh, you know, you got you got your booth here and she would work my booth and things like that. And then eventually I had my sister. Um, my sister kind of came along once she saw what I was doing. But it was always a thing where people had to see what I was doing. You know, oh, what is OK? What is this you're doing? Uh, OK. And then they kind of it was always a thing where I was convincing people that, hey, this is what's working. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. Time like now, you don't. Have, who are you gonna convince right now? It's right now. Everybody's got there's there's female DJs everywhere, this that and the other, right? Mm-hmm. But at the, in the nineties, late nineties, two thousands, it wasn't a lot of female DJs. It wasn't a lot of them on the radio doing mix show. I'm not talking about on air personalities. I'm talking about mix show. You know, mm-hmm. so to, to get on the beat, come back from Vegas. I was on the air in Vegas doing mix show came out here back home to LA to come home to, to your hometown and to get on the radio. I was on the radio with Nautica De La Cruz. I was doing, you know, middays with her and and um, afternoons or Saturday nights, full-time mix show. So it wasn't a whole lot of females at the time doing mix show. So I feel like that's a great accomplishment, you know, for where I came from, you know. For real, that is a great accomplishment. And you know what? I'm thinking, I was I was most likely listening to you and didn't even realize that that, that was you because I I moved to LA, um, in the night, well, the late '80s, early '90s. Yeah, I was on the beat when I came when I came back home. I was on the beat from nine uh, 2002 to 2006 or 2007. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the beat after that, they changed over. They changed um, format. Yeah, they switched formats. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I didn't. Like I didn't listen as. I didn't listen as much. Yeah, and no, I, I mean, they changed <laughs> formats because they changed the music. The music changed, and then they eventually were sold to another media company. You know, and mm-hmm. a lot of people from the beat that were on ended up making the transition over to KJLH. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of people that were on the beat. You know. Um, so it, it's just, like I said, I feel like I accomplished a lot, um, at a time where there wasn't one everywhere. There wasn't a female DJ and not that there are now, but I mean, at a time when most DJs were men, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. Especially on the mix show, you know, you, you, you had a couple of, you know, power 106, you had, you know, a lot of, there wasn't a lot of females in the mix show. Were people trip? Were people tripping on you because you were a female? Oh, uh, they just were like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. You know, oh, I heard you on the station. Okay, you know. But a lot of times they they didn't know I was from LA. When I told them I was from LA, they thought I was lying. And I was like, no, nah, I'm from <laughs> LA. It's just I left for college. When I left for college, ten mm-hmm. years ago, <laughs> or however long, you know what I'm saying? I was a high school all American basketball player. Now I'm returning back to LA as a DJ. Most people that knew me as the DJ were industry people, people that were servicing my records, people that were sending me music because I was on the radio in Vegas and in Arizona, but they didn't know Mm -hmm. me in LA. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so a couple questions brewing. (laughs) Loading. (laughs) The first is, okay, so you, because I was curious a lot of the things that you talk about in terms of like your drive, now you might think that that's, that's just normal because that's how you are. Mm-hmm. But in talking to a lot of different people, <laughs> the drive that you have is not, necess- is not normal, okay? It's what sets you apart from the average person. So my question is, my question was like, where did that drive come from? But then you also did talk about watching your grandmother like with her story like did it come from her like where did that drive come from oh and then you did mention that part of your drive last motivation was getting out of the hood yeah yeah i mean when i you know and uh, i grew up obviously in 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 south central when it was called south central la <laughs> um and so you know i was i was uh, all of basketball was my thing i was really good at and i i saw it as a way to to be able to get a full ride I, i'm not saying i couldn't have gotten the academic scholarship but to get a full ride and mm-hmm. to go where i wanted to go that was the the path i felt like was the best and so and actually i was recruited right here by usc ucla I, they, they were like you're not going to usc i did not want to go there just because it was right here not no mm. disrespect to the education i would have received and anything like that but you know you have them those moments when you just want to get out of your environment and go somewhere so but so practicing and and even then my senior year you know i was a senior who already had they have two signing periods and so i had i signed my um my signing date was november or something like that um 
I got that thing signed and I already knew what school I was going to <laughs> because I was like, all right, I, I'm trying to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? And so, mm-hmm. It was just one of the things where I was like, yo, I, the drive to get up out of here and, and go somewhere else and just get, get some fresh air and be in a different environment. That was a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you're trying to achieve something, you got to have something that's waking you up in the morning, making you want to get up and, and go after it. I think DJing is one of those things because I would say now in 2023, everybody and their mama's a DJ. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So now you got to have that thing where it's something setting you apart or, you know, you're always going to have a parent saying, oh, what are you doing? Oh. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure the new DJs right now have a parent <laughs> that's going, what are you doing? Oh. And and so when they ask me the question, now the drive is one thing, but also you need to have the, the answer to the second thing is how you going to achieve it. You know, having drive is, is a thing, but how are you going to achieve what you want to achieve? You got to have the answer to that. You know what I mean? And I didn't have that answer when I first started. When I first started, I just was like, okay, I have all the equipment I have, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this going, this and that. But I didn't have the second part, you know, I just kind of went after it. Mm-hmm. You know? So there is a thing. <laughs> yeah. Know, talking to the people you need to talk to, trying to be at the clubs at different times, you know, trying to talk to the right con- promoters and connect with the right people. That's a whole thing. That's a, a job, you know. Mm-hmm. So what is your motivation today? Like right now, right now, like, what is it that's, that's moving you forward? Um, right now, to tell you the truth, I'm probably in the most foggy time of my life where I, I, I never had to question what my drive was, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so in 2023, you know, coming out of the pandemic and all of the things that that brought, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm having a moment right now where I'm trying to figure out what, what my next move is going to be, what, what part two is going to be as far as am I continue, how am I continue to move forward as a DJ or in the industry or um, doing mix shows? Because mix shows and music and all of that stuff, that stuff you can continue to do all the time, you know, but is it profitable? You know, are mm-hmm. you doing, um, everybody's, you know, doing the online space. So trying to figure out what that looks like, how to make it profitable if you're doing it. Cause I'm, I'm not really on the online space uh, as much as I should be at this moment. Um, so trying to figure out moving forward with that or am I, you know, do I find something else that, um, that fulfills me and, and go after that. So mm-hmm. I'm really at a moment of reflection to tell you the truth, just taking it one day at a time <laughs> and yeah. to figure out what exactly that is, you know, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's real talk, you know, after being in this space for, for so long, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you have been at it and in it for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't look like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. Like, people are like, what? When I tell them, like, younger DJs, if I meet them or they, they meet me DJing or something, and then I start telling stories about stuff, and they'll be like, well, what? What year was that? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, it was this year or that year? And I literally had a guy was like, thought I was lying, right? I was like, no, nah, yeah. yeah, it was like 1994 or something, something. And they start calculating their head, like, how old are you? And I'm like, I've been, you know, DJing for a minute, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so to me, it doesn't, the thing about the music, when you're in the music, it, it, it keeps you feeling young. It keeps you feeling like time is not moving. Mm. I don't know if you know that that feeling. It, it keeps you feeling like time is not moving and you just in it, you know. That's true. That's true. Uh-huh. I'm thinking about the last event we did, you know, yeah. and I'm up there teaching dance instruction and we're having a good time. You're right. You when you are lost in the in all of that with the music, yeah. like you aren't paying attention to time, a like none of that. You just mm. you in it. You are in the right now of the moment. Yeah. And then you next thing you know, well, like I said, you, you're you doing the thing that you love. You're doing your thing. The only thing that makes you feel like uh, the time is, has moved in and, and this and that is when, oh, somebody will go, hey, how long you been DJing? Oh, you've been, <laughs> you know, or 
some new music will come on and it'll totally sound like that's not what was going on when you started or how how they do it now you know mm -hmm. so there's, there's some music out there like that when i'm like okay that's that's different but i gotta remember this is what they listening to right now this is how they're doing it right now you know mm -hmm. um, but the and and then also are you you run into somebody that's like oh you still dj and yeah yeah okay you know but the time it doesn't feel like it feels like like no time has passed and you're just yeah. in a fog you know to me mm -hmm. anyway it might be somebody else's experience might be different so <laughs> So, okay, this this question you might may or may not like it. <laughs> I'm like, how do you see yourself creatively, like as a creative person? Like, yeah. Um, I see myself now because I had right before the pandemic um, hit, I had start working on like a, a like an album where I wanted to do. I wanted to have like um, different artists because I used to do an artist showcase in LA. I did it for like three years. So I mm -hmm. had an artist showcase um, and I would work with independent artists and whatnot. So fast forward to like 2018, 2019, I, was, I had went to France for the meet em. Um, It was like a big music, um, music convention out in Cannes. And mm -hmm. so I thought, okay, you know what? I, could, I need some catalog. And so I was working on uh, like an album and I was getting some of the artists that I had been working with. So I, I would pick the music. We would pick the music together, you know, different things like that. Went to the studio. I had like two singles we was working on. So I was trying to work on that. And then the pandemic hit and I just kind of got lost in trying to figure out that out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the thing where I was like working on, hey, all right, I'm, maybe I could do like a Gigi Sweet, you know, presents album, you know, put it up on, on iTunes, you know, release it, get all the stuff. Um, that's something that still interests me in, in the space of the music that's going on right now, because I still have a good ear for the music that's going on right now. You know, picking records that I think people like at the club, picking, that's a thing as far as doing like A&R and whatnot, because a lot of times artists pick stuff and they, and you're like, man, why did you pick that? That ain't the one. You should have picked this one. This is the one that they reacting to. Put that on in the club. They reacting to it, you know? And mm -hmm. artists, a lot of times, sometimes they, they picking the one that they think is the one, you know, not that it's not, but DJs have a different ear and they see the dance floor. They see what's going on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like creatively, I still, I still have that, that, um, the drive to, to be able to do something like that. And I have a different, a lot of different ideas of how I can, um, flex that creative muscle. I just, I'm just not sure you know, where do I enter, you know, um, mm. still trying to figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How much does um, profit affect your ability to be creative in the way that you want to be? Uh, in that space, I, you can't think of profit. You just only could think of how, how good it feels, like how you mm -hmm. want it to sound. Because obviously when you're doing something like that, you're putting money out first. You're putting money out, you know, for the artist to go to the studio. And then if you're not making your own beats, then maybe you're securing beats. You know, you're buying a catalog from uh, some different producers. You're buying a catalog so you can own it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you can own the whole project. So you're putting money out first before you seeing anything back. You know what I mean? So... And if you're thinking about profit in that way, you never, you're not gonna f ever finish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause mm -hmm. that's, you gotta put money out first before you're ever gonna see. And you, you know, hey, you might decide you're gonna shoot a couple videos. You might decide well, how I'm, I'm gonna market this once it's complete, how I'm gonna market it. Um, even though you have TikTok and all of that stuff, you still gotta put together the project first, you know? Um, yeah. So you obviously had to have other um, other things coming in for you because that, you know, putting together an album and getting it together, that's not going to be profitable yet <laughs> to start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even if you have them performing somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, getting performances and getting them booked and different things like that. You know how many shows you have that artists aren't getting paid for those shows. You know what I mean? Especially yep. <laughs> You said, yep. <laughs> I've done a few. I'm like, basically, it's pay to play. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Not my favorite thing. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm. But like I said, I have a different ideas. I just don't have a clear path. And that's that's something that's very new to me because I used to have a clear path and now it's just kind of real hazy trying to figure out okay you know what what is what is it i'm doing okay <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah. i don't explain that to nobody i can just you know it's <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, uh i only have me and god to uh to answer to so <laughs> yeah I feel that. I feel that. I mean, there's many times I've been kind of like in a fog and it's not real clear. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you kind of have maybe like a general sense, but you really just have to like sit. You kind of just have to sit in it and just wait until yeah. it becomes clear. And that's yeah. not easy to do. No. <laughs> I would like to say that as we get older, it becomes easier, but I don't even know that that's necessarily true. I think it, it's just different every time it happens. Like, yeah. Has this happened before for you, or this is like the first time of you being in this space of like foggy and the path isn't super clear? This is the first time. Once once I figured out that I wanted to be a DJ and, and work in the music industry in that fashion and do radio and all of that, I had a clear path of something to go toward. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So whatever that meant, all the things that that meant, it was a clear path. And so now that I'm... Uh, you know, in this stage in the game, which is obviously people, they'll look at me and be like, you know, okay, you don't look like you've been in the game that long. Yeah, but in my, <laughs> I tell that to my knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, you sound like my good girlfriend. She was like, talk about her age. And I was like, whatever. And she was like, no, my organs tell me otherwise. <laughs> organs tell me otherwise, yeah. <laughs> I think she said organs, but basically you're talking about her body was letting her know. And I was okay, like, Dang. exactly. Yeah. You're like, okay. You, you know, you know, I always say <laughs> in the third person, I always call myself sweet. All right, sweet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you've been standing up a long time now, sweet. It's to, <laughs> you know, so, um, and I feel like, you know, I do have that, that youthfulness about myself. So a lot of times For people sure. don't exactly know, but if they've been around a long time, they know, you know? <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. Like, but I still feel like, you know, it's it's not clear, but I think a lot of people they have that unclear moment early. I I didn't have that unclear moment early. I I had it like, oh, damn, I could do this. And you know, and I had to drive. Now I have the unclear moment and it's like, okay. All right, well, what are we doing? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, Right. <laughs> I feel like I've had several unclear moments and I think that part of the problem is when you when you want to do too many things. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to be often unclear because you <laughs> want to do too many things and if you're trying to do too many things you can't see one clear path because you're looking at five. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the thing about, you know, I never had the oh I had these many things. I just I went from I kind of had a clear path of how I was doing, how I was moving. And then, you know, like I said, as you get older, now you're moving into different spaces and and different things are happening, obviously, and you're older in it. You know what I mean? So now you have people coming at you saying, or are you still doing it? You're still doing a career that's not traditional. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, And you're older in it. And so, you know, the entertainment business is one of those where it's a it's a young people's game you know what i mean um and so people are always trying to remind you of it being a young people game you know um Mm -hmm. and that's that's a that's a kicker too you know so but you know it is what it is (laughs) it is what it is okay so just from a practical sense for somebody that's listening what what do you intend to do to, I guess, get through this foggy time or to get more clear? Like, do you have anything specific that you intend to do to kind of help you move from this space or you're just not sure at all? Um, I'm trying to look at different areas of the entertainment business that I, sh- that's, that's the thing I would have changed. Maybe, maybe some time ago, maybe try to look at some different areas of the entertainment business that I would have went and maybe tried to intern or, or try to get more training at, um, 
while still in the space of DJing, but you know, it's time. You only have it's only 24 hours in a day, you know? So while you're trying to hustle and do your thing, it's not always easy to go give away free time <laughs> and things like trying yeah. to learn, learn different things. That's just like real talk, you know? So right now I'm trying to look at some areas of the entertainment business where I do have knowledge. I'm knowledgeable. I still have, you know, contacts and, and ways of, you know, touching base with people, but I'm trying to figure out what areas I might want to get into, um, you know, and, but I'm not exactly sure which, which areas those are, you know, while I'm still DJing. <laughs> okay. So you, so from practice and you're actually like trying to come up with a, a plan, like what I'm asking is yeah. like, do you sit down and write things out? Do you talk to yourself? Do you dial a friend? Do you meditate <laughs> in the morning? Like what is it that you do? Or have you done in the past? Or what is it that you think you might be wanting to do different to move in this in this foggy space to, to get out of it? Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going through like some of the different emails and different things that I've gone, some of the areas I'm interested in. So I'm going back through emails, looking at um, some of the contracts and stuff like that, that I've had some, maybe some of the um, instructional stuff that I have um, stocked up in my emails looking back and seeing okay what do i do here um some of the contacts of people that i'm doing events for maybe i'm talking to them a little bit about other opportunities um with some of the different companies um and just trying to figure out where where do i land okay if i'm going to hey if i'm going to submit a resume for this or that what am i doing what am i saying as far as my experience you know and how i can be an asset to x y or z if you know what i mean if i haven't yeah. done the job traditionally you know mm -hmm. um, so that's okay. what i'm trying to figure out you know you you are a woman of action let me just say <laughs> that i mean that that is true to your personality everything out about you is like you are a woman that takes action when it I'm comes fine. to <laughs> like you don't you don't get caught up in emotion do you uh i do I can, I'm, I'm emotional. I just think that, um, you know, the whole thing of, of D, being a DJ is emotional because you're really just trying to move the crowd and make them feel a certain kind of way, you know? So trying mm -hmm. to melt that part with the, trying to make it a career, that's a thing, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. DJing is all about emotion as far as trying to make people, like I said, you know, People not they not re remember you, but they're gonna remember how you made them feel. Oh, at this at this party, it was about this. Oh, that party was about that. Ah, oh, yeah, that's all emotion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get older and, and and look at like you start going, okay, well, man, I better I can't be emotional and and all of that about this because I now I'm at a certain age. I got to figure some different things out. I've been emotional all this time. I've been all the heart on it. But I think some of those things, you got to let them fall to the wayside if you're going to move forward into the next space. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it's emotional, yeah, but some of the business stuff, I think, has to come together as far as that. Because you are older. You're not younger and wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. You know what I mean? Like, ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> some of the stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. it's great to feel like that, but you know, in reality, you know, you got to sometimes let the emotion go. Well, you know, and I feel like even like with the times that we're in now, yeah. like where we may have had that luxury 10, 20 years ago to be young and be kind of like, why did I bust you down? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like today's young people don't have that luxury. Like, like you, you can't you cannot just hang out in your feelings and all of that, you know, like yeah. you have to kind of wise up faster now for the world yeah. that, in the world that we're living in. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of scary out there really, you know, um, I think, um, the, the luxury of being able to say, Hey, I, it wasn't a luxury then. I just kind of took, <laughs> I just kind of was like, this is what I'm doing. What, you know? like, Let me try it out. All they can do is say no, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but like I said, the, the the one thing for me that wasn't, um, you know, I look back at it now and probably was a thing that made me press on was the fact that I was taking care of my grandmother. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think if, if I had a whole different path, what if I didn't, wasn't taking care of my grandmother and I was just me going, oh, I'm really gonna do this or I might not have been as bold. You know what I mean? Cause sometimes you're bolder when you gotta, you gotta either make a choice, you know, and, and go ahead and do your thing, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes people don't have to be that bold cause they not pressed. They just like, you know, I'm living at home or I'm doing this, this and that. But sometimes when you pressed and you go, I gotta be bold, you know? I, the, the people now, I think they have a lot of, I would say a lot more tools available to them than we did. You know, mm-hmm. the online space. You don't have to buy records anymore. You know, that was the thing. You had to either buy records, be on the radio, or be in a record pool to get to even get your music, to even get your records. You had to, you know, now it's just, oh, email me. Just, send, you know, I can get it offline, you know. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot more things available to our younger generation which is great you know what i mean um even the fact that you don't have to use turntables you can use a controller <laughs> and, a, and a laptop you know um i want turntables i don't want turntables to die <laughs> i mean you know there's a lot of things that you know technology has brought um to the forefront and that's made the life of the dj the life of an artist a lot i mean you're an artist right if you're making beats you know back in the day you had to use the mpc right <laughs> well you can use computer generated uh beats now you know you can do record your own stuff on the studio you know computer studio there's so many mm-hmm. things technology has brought to the, the forefront and helped but Dry, it's still now it's 10,000 artists out there, right? <laughs> and so, you still got to have you still got to be good, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or do, you, do you have to be good? <laughs> you know what? That's a whole nother podcast conversation. That's deep. We be, I have a small group that's been meeting, we talk about this all the time <laughs> whether or not you need to be good. I mean, yeah, and and that's um, what's the word. I mean that's so that's so subjective, right? Like from who, from who, from who, from whose lens? Yeah, from whose lens, right? As long as you're being authentic with what it is that you're bringing, you know, into existence, what is you're sharing, what is you're creating, then that, to yeah. me that is that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different rules that have been broken now. You know what I mean? Barriers that have been broken. You know, so. Mm-hmm. It's in times of change, so either you get with it or get on, right? <laughs> Although I will say, if you're singing and you're not in the right key and you can't, you're not a bitch. I'm going to say that that's not good. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I, listen. Uh, <laughs> there are some. There, I guess there are some baseline standards for certain things that will give us a general <laughs> sense of whether you are have some good about you with that skill. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, that's um, that's a, a matter of opinion, right? And, and we we can both agree on that. Um, technology has definitely helped push things along, help help bring things about that we never would have thought when I first started DJing. You know, so I remember I used to record my mixes onto a tape. I would record them onto a tape, and then I would uh, take that one tape and I would copy like 20 of them, spend all night copying like 20 of them. Next day I'm at the swap meet selling them. And that's how I got my start in radio. Somebody saw me at the swap meet selling my Master P uh, compilation mixtape that I had put together. And he was like, yo, this is dope. You wanna, do you know about our station? And that was the beginning of me being on the radio, selling my mixtape at the swap meet. Mm-hmm. So that was that was hustle in itself, right? <laughs> yep, that everybody don't have, but you had it. <laughs> everybody don't have that, but you have it. So if somebody's listening, y'all better get that. You better get that drive because that's something you know, that I, I don't mean, know what the, you know, the the twenty twenty three version of that is for you know people that are starting out. I don't know exactly what that looks like for them. Hmm. Um, but that was in between the spaces. That night I wasn't DJing. I was like, I'm not DJing tonight. I'm going to the swap meet to sell my CDs or my mixtapes. And that was that. So, you know, right now the online hustle, the online, what, what people are doing to promote themselves as artists, as DJs, there's so many different, you know, ways that they're doing it. And so I'm not exactly sure what their hustle looks like. You know, you have to identify what your hustle looks like, you know? 
Mm -hmm. And not listen to the voices. You know, people have other voices that are hitting them too, you know, depending on who, who, who they're around, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. We, we, I'm going to have to begin to wrap it up, but I'm like, wow, I just want to keep talking real quick based off of what you just said though. So you have been very intentional about who you keep around you. Uh, I, I would say for the most part, I was always around, you know, I would say people that are, once I got to LA, you know, I was around a lot of artists once I got back to LA, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you know, you would go and, and that's how I got in with a group of MCs called the system. They were all, you know, promoting themselves, making there was a, it was a collective of MCs, collective of producers, female MCs. Um, but they were also when when I started doing my artist showcase, I had a bunch of people, you know, on my artist showcase, G, uh, Glasses Malone, Sugar Free, uh, Yo Yo was on my showcase one time. Um, mm -hmm. And now I was like, oh, the showcase was a great way to promote artists and and also get new artists find out about new artists you know um mm -hmm. now it's a little bit different because i i haven't been in the artist showcase space i am actually doing an artist showcase um coming up this week with another company um called yeah, i'm gonna tell you the information right now i'm doing an artist showcase on this sunday november um uh, not is it the 19th yep um I think so. And, so, and that's that's another um group that's promoting the showcase and so i'm okay. excited it's called queens on the mic queens on the mic that is sunday november 19th in santa monica um mm -hmm. and so queens on the mic is is basically all female uh showcase um hip-hop mm -hmm. artists and r&b artists that's uh, dope. So people were, do they need tickets or what? Yeah. So they're selling tickets. Um, and they're $25. Uh, mm -hmm. the, name of the group is called global eclectic. If you go on my, um, IG DJ GG suite on IG, you can see, um, you can click on there and it has the information on there, but that's this Sunday. They do showcases once a month, but this one is the one for all females Queens on the mic. And it's a global eclectic LLC. Mm -hmm. um, tickets at twenty five dollars, so that's going to be a showcase of a bunch of different um, new artists doing their thing. So <laughs> yes, okay, nice. That's what's up. Queens on the mic, y'all get there, get there. If you were in the LA area, yes. Um, all right. Well, shoot. <laughs> so I mean, you know, if when you, once you've been doing it this long, you could be talking about stuff all night. <laughs> I know that's okay. I'm gonna have you back. I'm gonna have you back. I, I always tell people I'm have them back and they probably are like, you haven't called me back yet. I'm like, well, it's not time, but I'm going to have you back. See, uh, you, I mean, you, you, you're, uh, I coming you. Too, so. you know, I appreciate you saying yes. All right. All kind of stuff like thinking about this time or that time, you know, I have stories for all kind of stories and just, I think if, if once you wrap it up, my whole story is, you know, doing a career that wasn't traditional, starting out in a career that wasn't traditional 30 years ago and not really having the support of family at the time. And then once I got, you know, one one good supporter from my family that thought, wow, that's not a traditional career path, but she's good at that and and didn't stomp on it, didn't say, ah, you're not good at that. Uh, you know, go do something else. No, you know, had with one person and I just kept going. I kept my finger, you know, kept my foot, my feet to the ground and just kept hustling. And so yeah. here I am years later and there it is. Yep, there it is. I love it. I love it. And yeah, I'm excited because I know somebody is going to listen and it's going to, it's going to inspire them. I mean, I was inspired. I know that we work with artists and some, some, some of the artists that we work with, they don't even have that one GG. Okay, it's like, yeah. you know, so we're, we're trying to help fill that gap so that we can represent and be that one person that's like, no, we believe in you. You got this. You can do it because mm -hmm. it's, it is important. Yeah. Well, like you're saying, you're saying, hey, we believe in you. You got this. You can do it. But the next sentence has to be something like, 
this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Exactly. This is how you present this to, hey, my, my parents, they don't believe I can do, I could be a, a artist, a singer, a musician. And you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to, I actually met a couple the other day. They were going to, um, they were going to their son's recital, right? Mm -hmm. It was a, like a jazz recital. And I was like, oh man, he, he's in a, a jazz ensemble. They were like, yeah, you know, at USC. And they were like, he's not that good though. <laughs> At USC? <laughs> Come on. I was like, well, you know what? Doing something. Yeah. Doing something, you know. And they were like, yeah, he's not really that inspired, this and that. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. he's already there, this and that. The next sentence needs to be, well, here's some career choices that you could possibly go towards. You know, a lot of times, you yep. on, yeah, it's just the artist, but you haven't quite figured out how to make it make it a career. Okay, well, you at USC is one of the biggest schools that have all the film thing going on. You mm -hmm. need you know, all kind of things going on. Figuring out the how you're gonna get to the next step, and even in the DJ space. Okay, well, what's next? How do you make that into a career? Here are ten things that you could do as that career. You know, um, but I think a lot of times people just get hung up on saying no that. That ain't no good. How you going? How you going to pay for these two loans? You know, <laughs> things like that. Right. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, we can keep we can keep on talking. <laughs> but we'll save we'll save it for the next episode. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, um, let's do a couple of quick shout outs before we get off. So, one more time where they can follow you and reach you is it just ig and then say what it is uh yeah right now you can follow me on ig uh backslash dj J I J I suite on facebook uh the gg suite facebook page or yeah gg suite fan page or hit up gg suite on facebook you can check out my youtube page uh gg suite on youtube and um on TikTok, I'm DJ Gigi Sweet. Um, I'm revamping my my Gigi Sweet website. So, but the social media stuff, that stuff is popping anyway. So, um, you just go to those sites and check them out. And you can check me out on Linktree on my Linktree page, Gigi Sweet. Okay, Linktree, um, Gigi Sweet. Okay, I have one announcement too. I feel like you know when you're trying to get an announcement at the end <laughs> because we've been doing so. Um, you are part of the the first 100 right episodes for the podcast and we're getting close to our 100th episode so what we've been doing is we've been doing like a flashback friday where we have been sending out the links we've been counting we've been counting i said counting down but we're really counting up and so we'll send out the links to like five episodes in an email mm. and you can click it and watch it or whatever and it's like exclusive content because you can't see it anymore. Like if it's season one, you can only see the current season. So season one, you can't see anymore. But if you are getting our emails, like we've been sending it to you and you can like see them. Okay. So we, we did a little contest in the last, the email last week. And it was like whoever replied with the best reply for some question that we put in there about um, the podcast episodes. It was like we were going to give them a prize. We we're going to announce the winner on today. So I have to announce this winner, okay? Because we did get the best reply from Miss um, Lena Kennedy, okay? And her reply was so affirming. She was just like, you know, proud of um, what we've been doing, and she was grateful that we've been sent that we sent her or we've been sending her the links to watch. Okay. So I have to shout out Miss Lena Kennedy because. she the, the podcast flashback friday email contest so we are gonna put something in the mail to her okay and it's really cool because um miss kennedy is not your average joe schmo okay she's a community builder she's been doing like strategic stuff in the community for over 30 years Oh, wow. uh, she's responsible for like, <laughs> yeah, she, she puts on this like women's conference and expo, which is completely free that touches like thousands. When okay. I say thousands, I want to say it's like over 20,000 women have been touched by this expo. Okay. And she just does, she's an amazing woman. She did a lot of good things. So that's cool that she's listening and then she replied. So shout out to Ms. Lena Kennedy. Shout we got some coming in the mail from creative and projects. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, that's my only other announcement. 
Um, so you had to be here for that. So don't you feel special? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Lena holding it down. I need to make sure I'm paying attention to these emails so I can submit my answers. <laughs> yes, yeah, submit your answers. You, you probably will get them. If you don't, you're going to be added to the list because now you're part of, you know, you part of it. you part of the podcast family. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, we've been on for a minute, so we are going to have to wrap this up. I want to thank you again, uh, Gigi. You guys have been listening to DJ Gigi Okay, one of my DJs now. Well, I think she was back in the day, and I was listening to her, and I was too young to even put two and two together. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> you've been tuned in to For the Artist, which is a podcast brought to you by Creative and Projects. Until next week, you already know what it is. I want you to keep creating, y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs>